clunky, heavy goggle with, yep. your, with your phone in there, and it's it's not that perfect. So I imagine the you know, the PlayStation and all that they they've kind of mastered it, but you you are never out of your body. You still know. So I can imagine sitting in your chair with the stereo, the speakers just right, and and that would be like the next level of. Um, yeah, look, I, I think it, it, it does a couple of things. So, um, you know, it, it immerses you in that digital experience, you know, and, and uh, you know, 30 years from now we'll probably be, you know, in, in um, isolation tanks where you float and you're actually inter- interfacing mentally and there is no keys, there's no mouse. You're just mentally interfacing. So what are the steps between now and then? And for me they are, you know, a mechanically uh, sort of biomechanically neutral position to be in so your body's stretched out. You're not leaning over your keyboard and, and you're, you know um, – you know, even your lungs are slightly um, talked, you know, because of just sitting that way. So if you remove all of those things initially, the load on your body is reduced and so you can be completely uh, free and, and uh, I suppose, yeah, in, in the best possible position to, to work. And the way I like to um, sort of portray it is the average working day for a human being is about six or seven hours, which is equivalent to fly from L.A. to New York. Uh, and so we, we fly that every day if you work at a desk. But we're flying every day in economy class. We're sitting at a desk hurting our spines and we get curvature of the spine. It's called kyphosis and it's actually affecting people in their 20s now. And basically everyone has it. Uh, but if you're in a reclining sort of position or in a business class seat, so to speak, you can work every day in business class. And it's, it's probably, it probably costs less than a business class ticket uh, for the, to own it for, for life, you know. And uh, you'll be able to, um, you know, play games or, or do design work or stock broking, whatever it is you do, uh, in, in complete comfort, playing your best music. Yeah. And, um, and your back's yeah. getting a little like stretched out and relieved instead of being compressed. Yeah. I get right into the thoughts of um, – I actually stand up all day now I, I got, for that very reason. Yes. I, I used to sit down all the time. I noticed it even changed – I th- thought it just changed my body shape. And I feel like I'm uh, starting to stretch myself from, from walking around the office now yeah. and, and – uh, isn't it weird what we do to ourselves? And, and, and what about that? Do you ever use a? I've got a Mac. Every night I'm I'm messing around with a Mac on the lounge chair. I'm wearing a dint in my hand from the from it because I don't use a mouse. I'm on the on the couch, right? My hand's always there, and every night it's aching. Yep. But I'm just riding that pain. Years and years and years of just. And, and everyone will probably relate to hearing you say that. And I think, you know, we, we were designed or we evolved to run across, you know, savannas chasing down large animals. Yes. So here we are today sort of tethered to these, you know, rows of RGB screens flashing away and, and um, you know, a mouse and a keyboard, which are a pathetically slow input method, you know. And, and as Elon Musk puts it, like, we need to develop a, a higher rate of input so we can upload what we want into the, into the machine, like whether it's a, um, a you know, sort of a, a brain interface, you know, and the, I think he calls it a, a lace, a brain lace, or I can't remember the exact term he uses, but um, that's what I can't wait to do. And, then, you know, we don't have to kind of be, you know, uh, sort of housed in these sort of chairs and, and desks and, and, and wrecking our bodies that aren't designed to do this, you know. It's, um, it's, it's, it's actually hurting our health. It's sort of one of those larger problems that doesn't get discussed. Sure. I like your idea that you're, um, you're shutting yourself away from things. I, I can imagine going, no, lock the door. And in that, I had a little more, all morning, to be honest, I, I have uh, this massive anxiety. I can't finish a task. So a builder once told me you have to finish everything and then you get paid. So yep. It's constantly on my mind. So, yep, I'm going to do this this morning. I'm going to get that quote away. But you know what it's like? Four emails drop in and I'm so addicted to checking emails. Bang, bang, bang. Well, there's four more problems to solve. And I know there's that one hanging from the first thing in the morning. That's where it builds up in my head. And no matter what I do with, with systems, Carl over here tries to tell me, what you know, this is what you should do, blah, 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 blah. blah. But I can't get them out of my uh, brain. But if you can lock yourself away just for that little time in the day, it's what we all should I, be I, doing. And, I, get, and then things will be done correctly. Yeah, I mean, I know what you say. Like, uh, it's, it's sort of like you start the day with this real optimism that, you know, you're going to accomplish those, those tasks for the day. And, and then there's always another 30% of things that come in. And uh, time is the currency of the 21st century. And that's, that's the reality of, of what we're up to now. And, and uh, yeah, like if there was a way where you just had 
you know, some other ability to just get more of it done, you'd actually have then time to go and like go for a surf with your kids or, you know, go for a ride on your bike or whatever it is. And, and uh, we're just yeah, we're just trapped now, you know, and, and uh, hopefully someone can develop a, a speedier method to do it all. Are you good at that? Like you seem like you are good at having a bit of me time and I don't think so. I, I think um, my, my wife would probably say that I could improve a lot on that, to be honest. Um, I think what, what I do realise is, um, and when I speak to a lot of the brands I work with, if you're a hardworking person, you need to have that moment where you just do nothing and you, you have that, you know, um, that moment to just, yeah, just escape. Uh, for me, like I would often, you know, like I'd, I'd be in my in my business with hundreds of staff, well, up to 100 staff, depending on what year it was. And I just go, you know what, I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to drive to Nimbin and I'm going to sit in a river next to the cows on my own, listen to music and just forget about the crazy world. And it is crazy. This world is insane. Yeah. And you, it's, it's easy to take it too seriously. And I think... Um, or a planetarium. A planetarium is the other place I go to to just defrag and... and uh, just restore my my uh, mojo or energy, you know. And and if you don't do that, you end up you you end up going backwards. And uh, I probably haven't done enough. Of, I could do more, you know. I think right. every, well, I think we probably all could. But you've got to figure out what it is that you uh, you know want to. How how do you you know de uh, uh, what's the word? Yeah, just yeah. decompress, you know, whatever that is for you. You need to do that. Not too much, not too little. Yeah, well, that's what I remember the last time we spoke, which was almost two years ago. Uh, I can do it on a plane. Yes. You get on a plane, you look out the window, and I have that feeling of, like, who am I in the world? You can look down on the world and go, I'm just a, a speck of something. When I land in that other area, I hope to make a difference. I can, I can stand out a little bit. But it's few and far between for me lately, yeah, getting look, on those planes. You, you're spot on. I think, yeah, like, there's that element of distance. You know, t- uh, it's, it's – if you have that, that isolation, you can then contemplate and, and – compute what you do, what you're doing you know and and uh yeah i think uh, i mean creatively from an airplane that's why i built my studio was was i wanted that experience whenever i needed it you know and, and jumping on a plane just to get into that mode is slightly expensive and and uh you know not not always uh easy to do so um yeah i think it doesn't get discussed enough but i think you need to figure out what it is that, that works for you and, and, and do that as often as you can and, and look at your life from an external sort of scenario and, and that, ex, you know, that sort of extra dimensional feeling, you know, and, and there's different ways in life as we all know to do that. But I think it's, if it's positive and you're going to improve yourself and what you're doing, then do it as much as you can. How about this one then? Okay, being a... Uh, well, what I do know about you is you seem to be able to handle... You, you definitely have your hands in, in a lot of the design. You, you're very active with the uh, websites for your businesses and the way the shopping carts and, you know, that which is a great skill. Like how many people do you know that have what, that one thing and no interest in the other part and it all falls apart. You see it over and over and over. But um, which means there's a this growing thing in your mind of like, oh, I'll just do it. I'll just you know, only because I, you know, look at me. I'm in a band and, and and all these sort of little businesses and stuff. I can just do it faster than I can even explain it to someone to do it for me. Put as, but as a business sort of owner or something, you, it's, you know, I'm getting at like a. Uh, the only the only other guy I know who's, who's made a squillion squillion bucks is my own old man. He's still at the head of a big shed company. And he just knows how to do it. He still he doesn't carry any of that. He most definitely does. But he can hover above the business and get everyone to do everything for him. And but doesn't mind yelling at them for not doing it good enough. But um, I don't know anyone else like that who can just not not get involved in any of it. Just yeah, just I, I think it's, it's it's impossible to get a perfect business and and be in all places at once. And and uh, I certainly had many weaknesses in in managing a large team. Like I re- always think, you know, I could manage five people as a team. We could, we could achieve anything. But when you get to 10 and 15 people, 20 people, the laws of diminishing returns start to come in and, and, you know, you go to a corporate sort of a scenario and then that requires a different animal to run it, you know? And, and, um, I'm, I'm not sort of naturally a boss. Like I, 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 I don't know. Yeah. I've never been, um, you know, maybe in my later years, I kind of got better at it, but, uh, you know, there's, 
I, I look up to people who can run businesses with thousands of staff and I think, how the hell do you do that? I mean, I, I like the creative process. I like the designing the products and if I do them well, the rest of it should hopefully work. But that, that, that goes so far, you know, and, and, um, but, but yeah, I've, I've certainly made many mistakes made in, in that, in that realm and, and, uh, can certainly point to people that, that have done amazingly well at it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it never ends. You ever wonder? I know I don't. I'm sure you don't either. There are certain kind of people in the world that can just work for someone else, clock off at five, and go do their little thing that they, you know, their, their mind's complete. I, I see, I'm, I'm, fantas- I'm uh, romanticizing them, but like they clock off from work and then now they're just like, woohoo, go do their little thing that they do and maybe go to the pub and have a few beers every day and they see Barry and um, it's just that cool little routine. It's got no, but I have, I'm 44 years old, I have no interest in any of that. It's, it's got constant. Are you like that? Your mind's look, always going, what are we doing? What are we doing? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. And I think, look, everyone has their own pathway. And, and I think um, some people are more comfortable doing a, you know, that type of a role. And, and um, yeah, for me, like, I've always had this feeling like, you know, you've only got 33,000 days alive. You know, it's like if we're in an amusement park. We, you know, we, let's say you go to Dream World. That's that's what two days. If you get a two day ticket, that's how I look at the world. I've got I've got thirty three thousand days, and um, might as well do something while I'm here. I mean, I'm not saying I have achieved anything, and and I've still got so many other things I want to do. But but um, I'm driven by that that feeling of the time is running out, and and. Um, yeah, like just, you know, you, you, can, you can do, you know, like I think having that comfort of working for someone else is really good and, and I envy that Saturday night opportunity where you can, you can put your hair down and have a beer and, and, you know, the emails aren't going and the phones aren't ringing and um, I wish, you know, I could have that life in many ways. But, um, yeah, I just love the idea of creating something where there was nothing before and, um, yeah, just, just building and I never left the Lego set as a as a person you know i just love building planes and having them symmetrically made with the same colors and then all, all i do now is just do that but now with clothing or or other little inventions that i've got and not all of them will work and and some of them that do hopefully then i can live off you know um and be prepared to fail you know and and uh, but, but certainly yeah I, I i prefer to go out there and, and take the pain of having my own business um than, than having the easier ride through uh, but I don't begrudge anyone that, that does that either. But, um, yeah, it's 33,000 days. You might as well do something while we're here. Yeah, that must be I've got, what, 14,000 days left. I guess if, if, if you look one. at it like that, yeah, like once childhood's done, you know, you're... <laughs> <laughs> and the podcast pro- is over. <laughs> well, <laughs> then, <go. laughs> and look how many of those hours you're asleep. So I believe yeah. it's it must be sixty percent of that time you're asleep technically. So then uh, now you're looking yeah, right. at what's that? You know, twenty seven thousand hours. Oh, sorry, days. So yeah, I mean it's and you know like as we said when I first walked in earlier, it was like how quickly time flies. You know, mm-hmm. and and um, yeah, maybe maybe we're here to just be in a big toy set and build stuff, you know, and, and uh, be creative. I think that's, you know, and creativity comes in many forms and um, it's fun. We might as well do something yeah. fun, eh? <laughs> we're for anim- you know, we're animals. We've got so much drive. It'd blow your mind. Well, like, uh, yeah. And these, these, these phones, it's, it's interesting. They've, everything has been made to make it all easier. Oh, now we don't have to do this. For artwork, we don't have to go to see that and they post over the uh, the proofs. It's, bang, created by myself and over there in, in two seconds. It just means we can do more shit in the same day. You're making it even worse for our, our brains to compute. Isn't it funny how we work? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it is quite scary and I think uh, we're moving into uh, a period in, in civilization where, you know, I think it's going to be much more of a disruption than the Industrial Revolution. You know, I think automation is going to be a great thing and a, and a bad thing. Like if, if you're driving, you know, a car for a job, like let's say you're an Uber driver, like in five years from now, you won't have a job because those will be Teslas or they'll be like a, you know, a Chevy Volt or something like that that will be replacing you with no driver. And so I think, yeah, there's, there's big change coming. I mean, I, my meeting prior to coming in here was um, in the apparel industry, you know, and, and um, they're showing what's happening there, you know, from this automation platform and, and the middlemen are all gone. There is no middlemen. The, the agent doesn't exist anymore. The, the shop owner speaks to the brand founder. And those two build a business, you know, and, and obviously as that scales up, you, you do have more people, but um, there's a real change coming. And I think we're only just seeing the beginning of it now with, um, with things that are happening and uh, Amazon's coming to Australia, you know, that's, yeah. that's an amazing... I'm worried about that. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, I, it's, I see it work in Japan because we we're always in Japan. Now you can get things from China in twenty hours. Like full, I got a full bike fiberglass kit from China. It,